Introduction to the Parallel Plate Waveguide. First, we need to answer the question, what is a parallel plate waveguide and what is its geometry? Well, it is two parallel conductive plates that I'm showing here, these brown plates. There's an upper plate and a lower plate. Now, this analysis is really performed with these plates being of infinite extent in the X direction. And I'm showing a width Y because there actually is a practical transmission line, which is analyzed like a parallel plate with a finite width. So I'm drawing that here, but the, the, the parallel plate wave guide is we're going to analyze it is really of infinite extent in the X direction. It's separated by a distance D and it could have a fill with some permeability and some permittivity that I'm showing as mu and epsilon here. I'm letting the mode propagate in the Z direction and that's convention for guided waves. We can do that without loss of generality, which places the cross section of the guide in the X, Y plane. And usually it's the Y direction that is the sort of inhomogeneous or non-uniform direction. That's the direction of the plates. That's the direction of the confinement. And so X is the infinite direction here until except at the very end when we do actually analyze a parallel plate of finite width. These are waveguides. They support multiple modes. With a homogeneous fill, they'll have a TE and a TM mode. We should already know that sort of thing. So here I'm plotting the first three TM modes at the top, and on the bottom I'm plotting the first three TE modes. Now I'm only plotting the Z component of the electric field at the top and the Z component of the magnetic field at the bottom. So just understand, these really are incomplete pictures, if you will. So the first order mode in the X direction, notice one bright spot vertically, and that'll become more meaningful later on when we start labeling these, and we'll label that as TEM, sorry, TM1. Uh, TM2 mode, well, there's two bright spots, and they're 100 degree, 80 degrees out of phase, thus the red and blue colors. TM3, three bright spots vertically, and you can imagine the TM4, 5, 6, the TM6 would have six bright spots vertically. And so those are the higher order modes. A very similar thing for the TE modes on the bottom, except we're visualizing HZ instead of EZ. Now we might say, hey, we have a TE1, but I'm looking at two bright spots here. How is that? And that's a good question. You're actually looking at two half bright spots. Hard to see, but if you examine uh, the, up, the picture at the top and the bottom, you will notice, yes, okay, that's two half bright spots. So that's just one overall bright spot. And similar thing for the TE2 mode, the middle color is one bright spot, but then we have two half bright spots above and below that for a total of two bright spots, TE2 mode, and so on. So that's what these modes look like. I summarized many of the equations, some we won't even derive, but these are many of the equations that we're about to derive in the next few videos. I'm not going to talk through that here. There's not a whole lot to say, but I do think this is a nice place to put the summary to forecast where we're going. And this is all the different properties of the modes, how you calculate the fields and what the fields look like. I took the liberty and just did one dimensional plots of the first three and a half modes, the zero mode, there's not one for the TE, so. Uh, but I plotted the first four order modes for both the TE and the TM, so we can see what those look like. And as I mentioned, there is no TE zero mode. I went ahead and plotted it, because mathematically I can do that, but um, it's not a guided mode. The TM zero mode, turns out, will be the TEM mode. But I've plotted all the rest, and these plots will have more meaning as we go on, but suffice to say, this is what's coming in our future for the parallel plate waveguide. Some notes on these. The parallel plate waveguide only supports a TEM mode when it has a homogeneous dielectric. It has two conductors, so it's a transmission line, but if there's some kind of swirly or something inhomogeneous dielectric, it does not support a TEM mode. It may support something that comes very close to a TEM mode, and we could get pretty accurate answers if we analyze it that way, but it is not rigorously a TEM mode. Also, when there's a homogeneous fill, it supports TE and TM modes. Those are the higher order modes. 
The lowest order mode of the parallel plate waveguide is the TM0 mode, which corresponds to the TEM mode of this transmission line. Of course, only if it has a homogeneous fill. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EM Possible. I want to create more videos and I want to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.